All right, so today in class we looked at how do you find the, the <coughs> sorry, looked at uh, factoring out monomials from a, from a polynomial, trying to break this apart and get a number out of it, or get a number and a variable out of it. And the way that's actually used is it's called the zero product property, and it's finding the roots. So we're, today we're going to look at finding the roots of an equation. And remember we talked about roots being on a graph. You have our parabola we talked about in that video that you guys didn't like. Uh, the roots are right there. It's the place where it crosses the x-axis. It's known as the solution to those, or the solution to a product of polynomials, or binomials or trinomials. So those are really called the solutions. Um, so the zero product property says that if a times b equals zero, then a or b has to be zero. So that means that if you have an equation that's equal to zero, um, then something times zero always has to equal zero. One of those has to be zero. So I'll kind of break it apart right here. You can see that AB equals zero. Then either A has to equal zero or B has to equal zero. Because it's either A times zero equals zero or zero times B equals zero. So how we're going to use that is we're going to look at some equations that look kind of like this. Um, and we're going to look at some like we did today in class also. So we have 5 plus x times x plus 3. So imagine this is our A and that's our B. And that equals zero. So we're going to break this apart into two separate equations. So the first one is saying that 5 plus x equals 0, or we're saying that x plus 3 has to equal 0. So this is that if a times b equals 0, then a or b has to be 0. And then we're just going to solve these by, so you can subtract 5 from both sides, so x equals negative 5, or you can subtract 3 from this one on both sides, so x equals negative 3. So what this is saying if you imagine this graph, is that this graph is going to look something like this, okay? <clears throat> and it's going to be at negative 5, so that would be this point over here at negative 5, and this one would be here at negative 3. So it's saying that's the root of the solution. Okay, so looking at the second one, we can break it apart again. So you have 2x plus 4 equals 0, or 3x plus 6 equals 0. So by solving it, so subtract 4 from both sides. 2x equals negative 4. Divide that by 2. So x equals negative 2. Or on this side, subtract 6 on both sides. So 3x equals negative 6. And then divide by 3. So x equals 3. So again, on our graph, that would mean that it would look something like that. And one would be over here at negative 2. One over there at negative at positive 3. Okay. So how this relates to yesterday, kind of your house relates this morning is, is a big piece of it. So we're going to look at is uh, finding the roots if you have if you have something that's unfactored. So you didn't pull out that monomial yet. You didn't pull out something, so you want to solve it. So what you can do is actually you can figure out what that is. So I know this is a really easy example on top here. You can solve this by subtracting 8 and going from both sides. But I kind of want to show you an easy example to make sure you get the right one. So with this, um, the greatest common fact, talked about that today, the GCF, between these is equal to 8. You could pull out an 8 and get 2x plus 1 equals 0. So you have two things that are being multiplied together, and either 8 has to equal 0, which that can't happen because you can't have 8 equals 0, or 2x plus 1 equals 0. And we can solve this one. So minus 1, 2x equals negative 1. Dividing by 2, x equals negative 1 half. And if you would solve this one on top, um, thinking about that, subtracting 8, you have 16x equals negative 8, and divided by 16, you get negative 1 half. So just kind of to show you that it works by factoring it out, just like it works when you don't factor it out. But the power of these really comes when you have ones that um, can be factored into multiple pieces. So for instance, our GCF for this problem down here, so our GCF uh, is, you know, we have 6, because 6 goes into both 6 and 30, and also x squared, because you can pull out an x squared from both of those. So that means that we have 6x squared out front, and then we'd have 1, because 6x squared times 1 gives you 6x squared, plus 5, because 5 times 6 gives you 30, and x. I always like to kind of redistribute this in my head, so saying 6x squared times 1 gives me 6x squared, 
because x squared times 5x gives me 30x to the third, so that's right, and this equals 0. So, so what we can do then is we can solve both of these and say, okay, 6 x squared equals 0, because that would be our a, or 1 plus 5x equals 0. So 6x squared equals 0. Um, dividing by 6, x squared equals 0. Square root of both sides, so x just equals 0. Normally, if you have something like that where it's 6x squared or there's nothing like a plus or minus, it's going to equal 0, normally. But I'd like to check. And subtracting 1 from both sides, so 5x equals negative 1, and dividing by 5 on both sides, x equals negative 1 fifth. So thinking about your graph again that we showed you those parabolas, you do a really small one. So you've got 1 at negative 1 fifth and 1 at 0. Imagine that's pretty small, but negative 1 fifth and 0 are its roots. All right. So we're going to do two more. Um, I want you to do these ones on your own. So pause the video for a second and try these two on your own see what happens. All right, good. So uh, first one, we can factor out our DCF is 3x. So 3x goes out front. And we'd have um, x plus 5 equals 0, breaking them apart. 3x equals 0 x plus 5 equals 0, so x equals 0 on this one by dividing by 3, and x would equal negative 5, so you subtract it 5. All right, so you got negative 5 and 0 as your two, your two roots. This one a little more tricky. First thing we have to do is we have to make sure it equals 0. So we're just going to subtract 24b from both sides. So we now have 9b squared minus 24b equals 0. And our GCF for this one is going to be a 3b. So GCF is 3b. So pulling that 3b out, we have 3b, because 3b times 3b is 9b squared, minus 8 and equals 0. So we know that either 3b has to equal 0, or 3b minus 8 has to equal 0. On the left-hand side, dividing by 3 on both sides, so b equals 0. Or adding 8 on this side, so 3b equals 8. Dividing by 3, b equals 8 thirds. Good. All right, so we've got today, remember we talked about the zero product property, so the ZPP, if you will, if you want to call it that, sign with me, where if one thing, if two things multiply together equals 0, one or the other has to be 0. Um, and we talked about, we kind of did some practice in factoring out monomials. So that's all we've got for today. And have a good night.